We're going to do another part of our series on wet cloths. We're going to take a subject and we're going to put the Bible to it and see what the Bible has to say. Today we're going to talk about your Confederate statues that's making the news. And we're going to look at it as far as the Bible has to say in an area that is below the Bible Belt. So we're going to first take our place in Psalms 115. Psalms 115 verse 4. And their idols are silver and gold and the works of man's hand. They have mouths. Statues have mouth. And they speak not. Eyes that have they. Have statues got eyes? But they see not. They have ears. Do your statues have ears? But they hear not. Noses have they? Do your statues have noses? But they smell not. They have hands. But they handle not. You know you put a sword in their hand. A horse bridle in their hand. They're not holding it. It's a mold. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are alike unto them. So is everyone that trusts in them those idols. You're just as dead as that statue. You understand me? You're just as dead as that statue. And we just read what it was. I'm looking up something here too. So uh, okay, we'll get one more verse here. So a statue has a head, eyes, nose, mouth, ears, and they don't do nothing. They're useless. And if a person has eyes, ears, nose, mouth, and they don't do nothing. They're dead. So are the statues. Now, a statue itself, uh, there it is. It's in the park. It's in a cemetery. It's in front of the city hall. Okay. It's not being worshipped. Oh, look at the statue. Oh, yeah, you know, this man's name. He, he's a soldier. He, he's, okay, it's fine. But America today has turned... August 2017. Oh, you're taking down my statue. Oh, you're getting rid of my statue. Now you've turned it into an idol. It's not just their standing. It has now become your desire, your love, your care, your emotion. You've got to do something about it now. You have stepped over the bounds of a statue into an idol. So let's look at Psalms 115 as we finish that one. Statue. Does it look like a statue? Looks like a statue to me. God says you're just like it if you're going to worship. Let's try another passage. Psalms 135. Wet cloth. I call these wet cloth because they put the Bible on something that is mired in love. And it just makes you, oh, shut up. And yet you're going to listen to this video. You're going to be charged by God. You cannot say, oh, I did not know. Psalms 135, let's pick up verse 15, shall we? The idols of the heathen are silver and gold, the works of man's hands. This is recited back in Psalms 115. A statue. Did God make the statue? Did Jesus make the statue? Did the Holy Spirit make the statue? Or did man make the statue? Oh, Psalms 135, 15. Let's read on. I don't think we're done. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes they have, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Neither is there any breath in their mouth. Genesis 2, 7. God breathed into man, and man became a living soul. These statues are lifeless. They are dead. They are not of God. Like I said, you can just leave a statue, it's fine, but when you start fighting over it, you start protecting it, you start grossing over, make sure it shines and make sure it's clean, make sure it's good. You're no better than worshiping Mary on the half shell. You're just doing it in the name of Southern rights. The rebelism of, of, of the South and the, the, you know, the Civil War and the Confederate soldiers and, and the rebel soldiers. We're just, uh, yeah. It's become an idol. It's become a god. 
just become your mainstay of your attention. I guarantee there are probably churches throughout the South and probably throughout America that this statues of removing them has become topics of sermons in churches. And I'm not even going to give a denomination because maybe all churches. I mean all churches. I mean all the denominations across the board. I probably got some kind of message with these idols. Should be about Jesus Christ. Should be about God and the Holy Spirit. Not. You know, I heard the other day I saw. Let me go over here. This is an extra. This Bible verse was quoted about the statues. The Bible. Proverbs 22. 28. I saw the other day quoted for these statues. Renew, remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Christian or whoever you are, that is written to Israel. That is written to the land grant to the children of Isaac and Jacob and the twelve tribes. A land called Israel where it has been divided by the children of Israel. You are not to remove or steal any of that property as Ahab wanted to do with Naboth. Don't go put in ancient landmark. Ancient? The Civil War is not ancient history. The putting up those statues are not ancient times. They're fairly new. What is ancient is when you go back to where God settled that land among the 12 sons of Israel. So, we can find Bible passages to disprove and approve of what we want to do. We can take one passage out of context and see we can have our statues. But let's take the Bible and show what it says about idolatry and statues. Shall we? We do want to do right. What do I care about the statues? I don't care. I absolutely don't care at all. I have heard stories and and testimonies of oh my dad would bring me over to this statue in the park and you know I thought it was I thought it was that guy he's alive and I remember the times my dad would take me to that statue we would go to that statue what not did dad bring you to God did God did dad bring you to Jesus Christ did dad bring you to the Bible we made statues an icon of idolatry and I'm going to say some things in this video, and I'm probably going to turn some of you off, but I don't care because I'm going to quote from the Bible. And it's not me. It's the Bible. And we're below the Bible belt, so why not we look at the Bible? See what the Bible has to say for a change. And I understand that there are Satan ministers behind the pulpit all around the world today and they will preach and teach anything to get you the oh oh there are probably churches i've already said they're preaching for the removal of the statues and then if other churches are preaching about they're removing the statues and i gotta get this through this is laid on the lord my heart by the lord say preach this message to those who want to be in idolatry because that's exactly what you are. When you're crying and foul and putting all your effort to a thing that has no breath, no life, no seeing, no hearing, no talking. You are involved in idolatry. And then you go to, oh, the Roman Catholics, they got statues and they got Mary in the half shell, blah, 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 blah. And you've got your Confederate soldier or whoever it is. That's no better than Mary. You are in the way, ways of the Roman Catholic institution. Theirs is a female. Yours is probably a male and a horse or whatever. Is there any difference? Absolutely not. Mary's statue has no breath, has no eyes to see, it has no mouth to talk. So is that Confederate soldier statue. Now he may have been alive before, okay. Mary was alive before, okay. So, let's look at Leviticus 26.1. Leviticus 
See what the Bible has to say. Get this video out. Audio. It needs to be preached. Rightness of the Bible, as I said. There are churches preaching for, there's churches preaching against. Alright, 26, what did I say? Verse 1. Ye shall make you no idols. Now, according to Psalms 115, 135, it says that those things that have no breath, no life, no eyesight, no smelling, were made by man. Ye shall make you no idols, nor graven image, neither rear, put up, stand up, rear you up a standing image. Statues are standing up. And even if they are seated in a chair, as in Washington, D.C., it's still put up. You have to set up. Now, I'm talking about all statues. There are people who go to Washington, D.C., oh, click, 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 statue. Oh, click, 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 statue. Oh, honey, see that statue there, that great man? That's not a great man. That's a piece of stone. Oh dear, will you get those postcards of that of that man on that statue? And we'll send them to our friends and say we are. Oh, look at these statues. And you go into our art museum. Oh, look at these beautiful statues. Oh, they're just so great. By a great artist. And you're worshiping. And then you go bash to Catholics. I'm talking to Christians. I'm talking to Bible-believing Baptist Christians that will mock a church with their statues, and yet, what do you do? Now, this is not for everybody. You probably look at this message and say, hey, brother, amen, right, I, I don't do that. Amen, glory to God. But there are Christians who are worshiping idols, and they think they're doing perfectly well, that God is pleased, or God doesn't care, or it's not idolatry, and you need a wet blanket to realize that it is called idolatry, and it's called abomination to God, whether it be confederate, whether it be a president, whether it be Mary, whether it be whatever it is. And this goes with sculptures, too. Oh, look at this finite sculpture of, I don't know what it is, but it's fine art. No, it's not. It's called idolatry. Let's get it right. Let's get it right. No, you go up there. Well, you know, they're shacking up. Well, that, you know, that's not shacking up. That's a fornication. Oh, they're having an affair. No, that's an adultery. Oh, I got this statue. No, it's idolatry. Are we good on words? Do we want biblical words? Do we want words to stand out? Then call your statue loving what it is. Idolatry. <clears throat> you can't do that to me. So, neither shall ye set up any image of stone. There's your statues. Stone. Most of them are stone, marble, cement. In your land to bow down onto it. They've been bowing down to them. Pulling them down, ripping them down, unbolted, whatever they have to do. And there have been others, you know, they're kneeling in front of the statue. They don't want it to go away. They're fighting for the statue. We don't want you taking it away. We got rights. We're going to have protests. We're going to have riots all over the place because of these statues. Have you missed church services for these statues? Ooh. Sadly, knock it off. Okay. Just showing what the Bible. Now let's go from the New Testament, work our way backwards, shall we? Let's go to First John five twenty one. First John five New Testament now. This side of Calvary in the church age, first John five. Five twenty one. Pages of mine stick, I apologize. You know why they stick. I can see here, Tan, I'm in church, and I uh, says, so turn to this place, and I can't, because my pages are stuck. I'm going to 1 Peter to Jude. Okay, 1 John, I apologize. 1 John 5.21, this is how the Apostle John, Peter, James, and John. This is how the Apostle John, who, 2nd and 3rd John, 
This is the apostle who wrote Revelation. Closes 1 John 5.21. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Oh. And what is the definition we have seen of idols so far with this outline? Statues. Don't bring your children to admire a statue. Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. Not a statue. Did you get that, parent? You're to bring your child to Jesus Christ. You're not to bring him to an idol. Absolutely not. What a way to close a book. The love of God, the, the Father, the Holy Spirit, the Word are one. Beloved, we ought to love the love the brethren. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, I mean, if thou shalt confess his sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. And then he closes the book. These things have I written unto you that, that believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life. And he closes the book off. Keep away from idols. New Testament. You may have been complaining before. Oh, you're in the Old Testament. Well, I'm in the New Testament. So let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9. 1 Thessalonians 1, 9. Again, like you said, my feet is sticking. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turn to God's big G from idols to serve the living and true God. Paul's right about the Thessalonians. You have left your small G gods to God, big G, and now you're serving God, Almighty God, the Lord Jesus Christ. That sounds great. You say, oh yeah, all right, I like that verse. Amen, glory to God. But America has gone back from God, big G, gone back to idols. You've left God in the Bible. They're taking down my idols. Oh, we want our idols. Keep our idols. Oh. And then, do you know that our military forces in the United States Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, Coast Guard, do you know that there are countries where our servicemen go to and they have had their Bible confiscated? Taken. The government has removed our military men and women. Thank you for your service. Have removed their Bibles based upon where they're going in Pacific areas of this world. No, nope, you can't bring that Bible there. They'll be offended. You want to cause, you want something to write to your politicians in Washington. Sit down and write a note and say, listen, we are a Bible nation. No, we're not, but that's what they believe. Blood, guts, and Bibles, and guns, or whatever they, they say. Instead of fighting for the defense of an idol, why don't you fight for the defense of our soldiers battling? Say, hey, let them bring their Bible. They can't bring their Bible, then we're not going to defend. We're not going to help your nation, your country. How about that? But we're worried about idolatry. We've got cases, not many, but we've got cases in America where Bible-believing preachers on the street are being you know, arrested. They're, they're, they're being penalized. They're being brought to court. Why don't you fight about the Bible being preached on the streets? Instead, something that can't breathe, something that can't see, something that can't talk, something that can't hear. America was a godly nation, was a biblical nation, was. We have left God and gone back to idols. And read the history of Judah before it falls under Nebuchadnezzar in the, in the country of Babylon. The Bible records they had idols on every street. They're up on their roofs. 
Looking at the solar eclipse. Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't mean to mention. That's another subject. There were more people yesterday looking for the solar eclipse than they were looking for Jesus. That was a side BS note. There are more people in attendance for and active about these statues, yea or nay, than they are about the Bible and God and serving Jesus Christ. Here at Thessalonica, the, the people there, they turned from them gods and they went to God. America has turned from God and going to gods. Look at your news. Look at your newspaper. That's the headlines. And there are Baptist churches that have Christmas trees, bale bushes. There are Baptist churches that have puppets. Don't puppets have eyes they can't see, mouths they can't talk? You have idolatry in the churches of America today. But it's okay. It's in the name of Jesus Christ. I wouldn't want to be standing in your shoes at the judgment seat of Christ when you watch that go poof. For the concrete statues, God may have to use a little dynamite, poof, but it'll be dust. You do know where concrete comes from. It comes from dust and, and dirt. So... Let's move on, shall we? I don't think you like that one. 1 Corinthians 12, 2. Ooh, a carnal church. Corinthians were a carnal church. 1 Corinthians 12, 2. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols. Thank you, Paul. Even as ye were laid, led. Again, like the Thessalonians, you guys were involved with this idolatry. You have turned to God, Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. America has turned from God to these idols. And Paul says, dumb idol. Now, what, what does dumb mean? Duh. No. Absolutely not. Dumb in the Bible, in the New Testament, in the Gospels, and through the epistles mean they're unable to speak. They brought to this man to Jesus who had a dumb spirit. It means he couldn't talk. Paul is backing up Psalms 115, Psalms 135. These idols that cannot speak. You know why you have to defend those idols from coming down, being brought down? Because they cannot defend themselves. Now, if they have taken down a statue or going to take down a statue with a man with a sword, why doesn't that statue use the sword of boom? Don't you touch me? Because that statue is nothing. Now that man may be able to use a sword in the war, whatever he is, whoever he is, okay. But as a statue, they can't do nothing. A statue, rock, maybe metal, stone. You would think that if that statue was alive, and they're about to take him down. You figure with that stone hand, if he smacked him across the face, he'd win. But he can't win. Psalms 115 and 135. He's an idol. And he can't do nothing. And he needs your protection. Satan has taken your eyes off the Bible and God and put it upon something that God says is an idol. You're involved in idolatry. We've seen two groups of people, the Corinthians and the Thessalonica, they turned from that to God. And I'm telling you, America has turned from God to idolatry. Christians. I guarantee of a surety that in those crowds of people are fighting for those statues, there are born-again Bible-believing Christians. And I'm assured that there are churches that are preaching yay and nay for those statues. Taking their eyes off Jesus. Taking their eyes off God. And not even dare, if you're for those statues, not even dare to do what I'm doing. Preaching about idolatry. You can't preach about idolatry when you love and, and defend statues. So let's go on. Romans 2.22 Working old from back to forward in the New Testament. Romans 2.22 
Thou that says a man should not commit adultery, does thou commit adultery? I mean, a man, no, no adultery. There should be no adultery, and yet preachers who preach against adultery have committed adultery. All right. Yeah, he's on adultery. He's not on idolatry. Thou that a Horus hatest idols, does thou commit sacrilege? Oh, oh, Mary and the idols of the Catholic Church. No, our Confederate soldier. Yay! Don't take them down. As I've already said, what's the difference between a Mary statue and a Confederate soldier statue? They're lifeless. They're dead. They're idolatry. Confederate soldiers of the, the statues, welcome to the Catholic Church. And there's some of you going to hear this message, oh, no, 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 ain't that bad. Yeah, I've been a Roman Catholic, uh, Roman Catholic, Polish. And my family told me the same thing. Well, they're aids to worship. No, they're idolatry. And when you put to somebody who's with these Confederate soldiers in these statues, well, they're just beautiful monuments. They're a respect to our historical roots. We'll get to that in a moment. You got almost the same excuses as the Catholics got. There's no difference. So, what's that? Let's go to Exodus 20, what Paul just said. <coughs> no, wait a minute. Hold on. I got that wrong. Pardon me. Acts 15.20. Don't go to Exodus yet. Acts 15.20. Now, talking about the Gentiles, what are the Gentiles? They're not, to, they're not under the law as Israelites. But there are rules and regulations for a Gentile Christian. So, Acts 15, 20. But that we write unto them, those Gentiles that are saved, that they abstain from the pollutions of idols. You know what pollution means? Uncleanness defilement James stands up and says okay as far as the Gentiles that are getting saved we're not going to tell them to get circumcised we're not going to tell them you can't have lobster thank God but we're going to tell them keep away from filthy idols do you know what statues have on them they have pigeon poop they have dust that's filth. Unless you go clean them. They can't clean themselves. No statue is going to stand in the shower and rub his underarms with, with uh, the soap. You've got to serve them idols by cleaning them if you want to clean. But if they're not clean, filth. And the Gentiles were told not to have anything to do with the idols. The Corinthians and the Thessalonica church obeyed and said, okay, we'll drop that and serve God. America has dropped God to serve idols. You are going against the principles taught by the book of the Bible. And yet you're going to stand there and say, God, guns, and Bible, and whatever junk you can say, while holding a rebel flag. You know what rebel means? <laughs> you haven't checked that word in a dictionary. Ooh, shut, shut up. Romans 13, 9. You want to go this way? Romans 13, 9. Some of you probably piping angry with me. No, you're angry with the Bible. Romans 13, 9. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. All right, let's see what Paul's reading from. By the way, he has no Sabbath. But let's see what Paul is talking about. Exodus chapter 20. Glad we didn't miss that Acts verse. But Exodus chapter 20. Let's see where Paul is getting this. The context. Exodus 20. And God spake all these things saying. I am the Lord thy God. Which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. Now Paul's reading it to Romans. Gentiles. 
Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee a graven image or likeness of anything that's in the heaven above, or that's in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters under the heaven. Thou shalt not bow down to thyself to them. Thou shalt not serve them. I am the Lord thy God. I am a jealous God. This is the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And showing mercy unto those thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Um, thou shalt not take the, the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh the name in vain. Uh, let's skip down to 12. Honor thy father and thy mother. That thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord God has given thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. That is the contents of Romans chapter 10. But I read through something really quick, didn't I? You were hoping. Oh, keep going. Keep going. Thou shalt not make. Remember Leviticus oh, 26 1. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. We'll look at that in a minute. Or any likeness of anything that's in the heaven above, or that's in the earth beneath, or that's in the waters under the earth. Are those statues in the likeness of things on the earth, man or bees or animals? God told you not to make it. How can you say you're not doing wrong with God when you're doing something that God says not to do it? Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Worshipping. Praying. Oh God, please let them keep the statue. Oh God, please let them have this order that they'll keep the rest of the statue. Oh God, please let them break their arms so they can't take the statue. Oh God, help. Oh. And they're probably doing it bowing in prayer. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. You're making God jealous with your statues and idolatry, Catholic and statues. You would read this to a Catholic, wouldn't you? So why can't I read this to Americans over statues? It's a different story. Aids of worship. Now watch this. This is the iniquity of the fathers upon the children under the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. God says, you're involved with that statue. You're worshiping on that. You hate me. That's God speaking, not me. That is not Stiley Hayward. That is God saying, you hate me. And with that, I'm going to pass that on to your children. Now, God says, as far as a man with sin, as a father and a son, the son shall not pay for the father's sin. I'm and the father shall not pay for the child's sin. But when it comes to idolatry, why does God say, hey, I'm going to go after you? Because you as a parent are teaching your children and probably your grandchildren that that statue, that, that idolatry, as the Roman Catholics do, generation to generation, they pass it on to generation to generation, that you got to have the crucifix around, around a chain, you got to have the crucifix in your house, you got to have the statue of Mary, you got to have all that. And then the parents comes to with his confederacy. Oh, you know, this guy, the confederate army, oh, he's so great, so probably have pictures in your house, and let's go take him to see the statue, and let's just honor him. You got the idea that this is wrong? Wet blanket. So, so what is the cry of America? Genesis 31. Some of you probably, where is he going with this one? What is the cry of America? Genesis 31. Genesis 31, verse 30. Genesis 31, verse 30. Now, Rachel has stolen images of her father Laban. Okay? Jacob's on his way to move out from Laban. He's going back home. Rachel has stolen images. So Laban catches up after meeting God. God says, you better not do that boy any harm because he's mine. I'm warning you, Laban. So Laban catches up with Joseph. And now... Laban speaking, verse 30, And now though thou wouldest needs be gone, 
because that was longest for my father's house. You sissy, you, you you know you missed your house. Blah 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 blah. I got you can go for Genesis 31 and the study on YouTube and Sermon Cloud. But yet, wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? Small G F. Field. You stole my gods, Jacob. <laughs> you meanie. How dare those people take those statues down? Sacrilege taking my statue down. You're doing the same thing as Laban's doing. Because that God has no power. That God did not say, Rachel, put me down. I'm your father. That statue's not crying out, leave me here because I am the statue. No. And so it's in the news, it's in the newspapers, it's in the talk. There are people who are defending their gods, idols. Let's get it. Let's call the statues idols as they are. You want to call a couple shacking up, you want to call it fornication, you want to call a love affair adultery, let's call these statues idols idolatry. Let's give it biblical terms, shall we? Unless you want to be a hypocrite. Because Catholics can be idolatrous with their statues, but us Southerners can't be idolatrous with our statues. And you're crying out that somebody has touched and removed your God as Rachel has done. Rachel has taken down and moved Laban's God and he gets upset. America, August 2017. There is nothing new under the sun, as Solomon says. Look at that. Shall we see it again? Let's go to Judges 18. Verily, verily, meant Jesus would say, this is important. This is important. You better get it. Verily, one. Verily, twice. Very important. I'm excited. I got excitement. I got excited over last night's message in Genesis. I'm excited about this message. I love the Bible. I love God. I want you right. I want you to do right. I want you to get off your pity party you're having right now and get off your anger attitude and your bitterness and get right with God. Get down on your knees, not for that statue. Get down on your knees and repent of thy sins and get right with God and get back in the Bible. Get back to God. Get back to Jesus Christ. Go in all the world and tell the people about Jesus Christ. Never mind your stupid statue. Amen? Did I hear an amen? be loud enough. Judges 18, 24. Now, Micah has made a Catholic church. He has his imagery. He has his vestments. He even has a young priest that he calls Father. Oh, great. He's going back in the Catholic church. He's leaving us alone. Am I? Is there such a difference? Listen, I'm Polish Roman Catholic before I got saved. I can speak about this. I live down south now. I guess I can speak as a southerner. Some of you disagree with that because of the message, but if I have preached. You know, but. All right, Judges 18, 24. And he said, this is Micah, after he's learned his gods, his priests, and everything's gone by the Danite tribe. Ye have taken away my gods which I made. Oh, what's a G-O-D-S? It is something that man made. Statues. Are they made by God? Are they made by Jesus? Are they made by the Holy Spirit? Absolutely not. What are they made? They are man-made. They are made by craftsmen. And Micah said of his own testimony to damn himself, you have stolen my gods, which I made. And the cry of August 2017 is, You're taking my gods away. You're taking them down. Nothing new under the sun. You need the Bible to correct you. You need the Bible to get right. Now, if you don't, you cannot say, God, I'm without excuse. So, The cry of America is, is, you stole my gods. And a couple more places. I want to look up something else, too. 
addition to this one. Um, let's see. All right, now. Let's go to Exodus 32.4. Exodus 32.4. A couple more places. Exodus 32.4. Something the Lord just laid on my heart now as of just looking up. 32.4. You have to believe these two. 32.4. America, 2017. Exodus 32.4. Some of you may know this passage. Well, let's, yeah, 32.4. And he received them at the hand and fashioned it with a graving tool. After he had made it a molten calf, and they said, These be the gods, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Aaron made this statue of gold, and they lifted it up. And where is it? Same chapter. Nope. Same chapter. So they dance around it. All right. Verse number. Oh. Oh, there's so much here. Um, I'm just trying. This is so much. Go back. It's, it's so much here. All right. Let's go verse seven. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down. Thy people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. That they have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and worship it. And have sacrificed thereunto. These be thy gods. Oh, how do... People in America do that. You are spending your time, your money, and probably your effort into saving that statue. That's worshiping. Time, effort, and money. That's sacrifice. To a God. You made it a God. And since there's multiple, there's God. Small G-O-D-S. Not God. And God is angry. Let's read further. Verse number 19. And it came to pass as soon as he was came nigh to the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing. They were making themselves dancing and partying and nakedness. It says Aaron made them naked with that and they're dancing and partying. I've seen that on news. It's a God. Not God. It's a God, small g. Now, one more place. Let's see where this one is. Okay. Let's see. 1 Samuel 5. 1 Samuel 5, then we'll be done. 1 Samuel 5. This has been good. I like this one. I like them all. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to see you the wicked and the sinful ways that you're doing that you need to get right with God. Alright. 1 Samuel 5. Verse 2. When the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it unto the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. And when they of Ashdod rose early in the morning. Behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face. Like the statues have been fallen down, taken down. Fallen on the face of the earth before the ark of the Lord. 
So that Dagon, who has a face, has fallen down before God. And they took Dagon and set him in his place again. They lifted back up. Oh, we're going to take our soldiers and these statues. We're going to put them back up. And when they rose early in the morning, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face, got a face, to the ground before the ark of the Lord, fell down before God again. And the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands were cut off upon the threshold. Only the stump of Dagon was left in. Listen, there's coming a day that all these all these statues, all this idolatry, all this imagery is going to fall down before God and proclaim, Thou art God. And you will be a loser for following idolatry. Now, to you, if it's, oh, yeah, that's a statue, that's nice, okay, bye. Or you just even walking up, you don't even care, you don't even see it. Oh, what? Okay. But it, if you put your time, you put your effort, your money, and your love and devotions to that inanimate object that does not move, that does not see, does not smell, does not talk, does not hear, you are now charged by God through the Bible. You are an idolatry just as worse as those wicked Catholics okay are you now willing to repent and get right with God or are you just gonna be angry with God because you're wrong 